So you're from Rochester, yeah. right? Moved there when you were in elementary school and never left. Well, what do you love about the community? I love the diversity that we have in Rochester. Rochester is our kind of a Minnesota secret of like big city stuff to do mm -hmm. and small town feel all rolled into one. Like Target and Target's right there and we had a great community theater and we have great schools and we have cool recreational activities and great parks and and you get all of kind of like the big city stuff but you still know the ladies standing behind you at Target and you still know all of the the parents on your kids soccer team and like it's it's just the most amazing place to live. And I read on your campaign page you said, I'm running for the house seat because I want a government that works for everyone. Oh, what does that government look like and how do we get there? Yeah, so I um, have been a disability advocate for the last, I don't know, 14, 15 years now. And what I have found is that the system, the government supports, all of the things that help us afford our lives work really well for some people, but other people kind of get pushed to the wayside. And I think we do that by making sure that we are fully funding the things that are important to people, rebuilding our care structures that we, f we, we haven't fully funded, right? Child care, education, disability care, elder care, making sure we put people at the center of our decisions before politics, before um, what might look good on the news or what might uh, show, you know, make somebody get a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. If we start from the basis of putting people first, start from the basis of making sure our neighbors have what they need and we're treating everyone like they are our next door neighbor or our friend from church or our kid's teacher. If we start from that lens when we're making policy decisions, I think we build a better Minnesota that works for everyone. And how did you get involved with running for the House of Representatives? Where, where did it all manifest from? When, when did it first start you thinking, you know what, I'm going to run for a seat. I can do this. So advocacy is really fun. But advocacy is completely based on policy, right? You advocate for people to get what they need based on the policy that's in place. So I did that for 10 years. And I, was, I always say I was kind of beating my head against the same brick wall, right? The policy didn't allow for the things that made sense for people. So I left nonprofit advocacy and I went to the state of Minnesota and I work at DHS as a policy lead. And I got there and I was like, I'm going to change the world. It's going to be so great. Um, and it's been super fun and I'm really proud of the work that I've done. But policy doesn't come out of thin air. Policy comes from legislation. And so if the legislation isn't good, if, leg if the legislation doesn't get into the weeds of the details that it you know, doesn't outline things in a way that allows good policy to be written, then the policy doesn't get any better either. And so I figured, well, I went to the state to change policy, and the only way that I get, the only way we get good policy is to get good legislation, so it seemed like the next logical step. And just finally, when you were out door knocking uh, during your campaign, meeting with people in your district, what did you tell them that you were going to work on when, when things get started here in January in 2023? Rebuilding our care structures. So people, care structures are not separate from the economy, right? Health care is part of the economy. Child care is part of the economy. Elder care is part of the economy. Disability care is part of the economy. All of these things are connected. They aren't separate things. If you can't find childcare, you can't participate in the workforce. If you can't find elder care, if you can't, if you can't find support, you decrease your participation in the workforce or you leave the workforce. If you can't find, if we don't have supports for people with disabilities, they end up in our hospitals and in our healthcare settings when they could be in the community, but then our healthcare settings and our hospitals get full and then we don't have spaces for other people and then that raises up the cost of healthcare and then we lose healthcare workers. You know, it's this big circle. And I think what I heard when I was on the doors is that people understand that we're interconnected. They understand that these things are interconnected and that these things don't exist in a vacuum. And so what I talked to people about on the doors was what are those things that are interconnected in your life that we could make a difference with with 
the surplus that we have and what the resources our state has to make sure that all Minnesotans are cared for and have what they need to thrive. Because if we rebuild our care structures and we support everyone, that helps everyone.